here in Darwin, we would like to share with you something of the recently held Songwriters and Scripture Recording Workshop. It was a time of building up the skills and talents of our Aboriginal and Islander friends. It was a time of looking at different ways of communicating the Gospel. A significant time of spiritual renewal and fellowship. Join us as we look at some of those aspects that made up the workshop. We began the workshop by looking at translation principles and how to get the main idea of a story and tell it in our own words. Words that are rich in imagery and feeling and have an immediate impact on the listener. In particular, we looked at different songs and scripture passages and tried to understand them. At the same time, I read a, a scripture of Isaiah 13, 1. Do not be afraid, I will save you. I have called you by name, you are mine. And the tune, I got it, is a traditional tune. Presentation on various factors that contribute towards good songwriting were included at the workshop. Both traditional and western styles were covered. Features such as the shape of a song and the use of repetition were highlighted. What you need to do is take your main idea uh, that you want to get across in the message of your song and repeat that over and over again. It might be in the chorus or it might come through um, in some of the verses, but it's so important to repeat your main idea. And remember you're only going to have one idea, but that needs to be repeated and repeated right through. It's just like when we um, take a hammer and nail. Now if I um, If I hit that nail in the, in the block of wood just once, it's fairly easy for me to remove, as you can see. But if I hit it two or three times, it gets a little bit harder to remove. And uh, even more, it's, it's almost, well, I can probably get it out. But it's pretty hard to remove now. And that is just like a song. We might have, um, one main idea, if it only comes across once in the song, we're going to just forget about it. But if it comes across two or three or four times, it's just like this, it's like um, hitting, hitting that idea into people's heads. We've got to repeat the um, main message over and over again so that that idea sticks, just like the nail sticks in this bit of wood here. Every song has to have features that catch people's guess, attention. Uh, Aboriginal musician Rodney Rivers referred to these as hooks like and demonstrated some of the guitar techniques he uses to achieve this. That uh, Johnny Cash, he sings a song and he used a little bit of hook la front. And that thing, he get a lot of people listening to the song straight away because you get a good like an introduction, or that little hook la front, what they call them. You know, and people like that sound. And then that beat, like a rock and roll beat a little bit. I hear the train a coming, it rolling round the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in force of prison, and time keeps dragging on. The workshop was not just about writing songs, it was also about increasing our understanding of related issues. Suzanne Hargrave led a significant discussion on traditional music and its place in Christian worship. I 
seen part of a video that shows Christians in Africa using their own language and their own kind of music and their own kind of musical instruments, praising God. Now, maybe a few years ago you wouldn't have seen many churches doing that in Africa and other parts of the world because Christians used to think that they had to use the Western kind of music, the white fellow's music, to praise God. They felt that the kind of music the missionaries brought was the right kind of music to use in church. But then a lot of Christians started thinking about this again. And I know some of you have been thinking about it. You've talked about it in your own groups. They began to think, why can't we use our own kind of music to praise God? God has given us lots of good things in our own culture, and our music is one of those good things. And we want to try to praise God, not just in our own language, but in our own music too. But there were some problems with that, some things they had to think about and talk about. Probably the biggest problem was that some of that tradition of music made them think of things they didn't want to think about. It made them think about other gods or other spirits or evil powers, things connected with their traditional ceremonies that they didn't want to be part of anymore. So they had to think about what kind of traditional music they could use in the church. Sometimes they decided the best thing to use was maybe a lullaby, the kind of music that mothers would use to quieten their children down. Sometimes they thought the best kind of music to use was the kind they used as a group around the campfire at night. Maybe music for telling stories or music for praising someone. Different kinds of music that they had that they could use in the church and was okay to use. We'd love to share this song. It's a Easter song we used to sing in Malam. Sometimes people had the wrong idea about why we sing songs or why we use music. Sometimes people thought, Music we use for power. We use it to make things happen. And many of you know about these kind of songs. Music used to hurt people. Music used to make people sick. Sometimes music called love songs used to make other people fall in love with you. And people thought this kind of music could actually make someone else do something or could make something happen to that other person. And the Christians thought, we don't want people to think this about Christian music. We don't want them to think that's what we do when we sing songs to God. We do want Christian music to have power, but a different kind of power. A power to help us praise God, a power to help us love Him, and a power to help us love one another. So they had to really think and make sure that people knew why they were singing songs in the church. You can use music that the old people will like, that will speak to them, and music that the young people will like. And often you can write new music that mixes the two together. It uses a little bit of Western instruments and Western style singing and music and traditional. You know, some of the Aboriginal rock bands that are performing right now and are very popular, they do that. They use didgeridoos and clapsticks and guitars and amplifiers. And they have some of the old mixed in with the new. And people really like that music. They're doing that all over the world, mixing different kinds of music together. So you can ask God to give you real creativity in putting different kinds of music together. I know some of you have mentioned that you don't have any of the older men who are really the good ones at playing the didgeridoo or playing the clapsticks or writing the songs. <clears throat> so you need to pray that God will bring into the church older men and women who know this kind of music and are really good at writing it, really good at doing those instruments. That's something you can pray about together. You know, the church can really play a very important part in keeping your traditional music alive. Because when you think about it, there's hardly any place in the world today where people get together, all kinds of people, young people and old people, and sing together. The church is about the only place where that happens regularly. 
Otherwise, people just listen to music. They're always listening to professionals performing music on the radio or at concerts. But there's hardly ever any other place where people come together to sing except the church. And if you don't keep alive your traditional music in the church, it will probably be lost forever. There was a white fellow a few years ago, his name was Larry Norman, and he wrote a song It was called, Why Should the Devil Have All the Good Music? Larry Norman really liked rock and roll, and he wanted rock and roll to be used in the church. So he wrote that song. I think that's something you can remember too. God has given you wonderful music in your own culture and instruments and ways of praising him. And why should only the devil have it? Why shouldn't God be praised in all kinds of instruments and all kinds of music from around the world? So if you would get together and talk about that with other Christians and pray about it and ask God to help you use your music to praise him. Songwriting is about sharing your ideas with others. Events such as the concerts at the local prison farm and another at the SIL Centre help to cement this idea. These events in turn build relationships between the groups which last well beyond the workshop. Well, we're going to sing this other one song now. And this is the song I, I wrote before when I came the first time, the songwriter, songwriter workshop. And I didn't write any song that time when I was here, but when I went back to Ropa, and then I started making, doing this song there, and it's about, Lord, I will live for you, Lord, I will live for you, and that's the time I was really talking to him and asking him, I want to be yours forever. This next song um, doesn't have an English word to it, but it does have Creole. <laughs> We had two recording studios operating for the workshop and we introduced the participants to them early on. It was very important that they experience the whole process of writing a song from beginning to end. Recording studios were a significant motivating factor. It is important that the participants have access and control of all the forms of media. Different ways of using audio and video cassettes were discussed and participants encouraged to format their own programs. Programs worked on included scripture reading and messages, dramatised Christmas stories and videos.
that lawyer talk that a workshop like this is not adequately described by just listing the things done. It is perhaps more about relationships built and encouraging the ongoing creativity of our Aboriginal and Islander friends. Perhaps it is best gauged when the participants leave saying, it has been good to have been here. I've been really lucky at this songwriters workshop, Yela Darwin, La SIL. All the different people from Gaman from everywhere. Like writing about song and recording about song. And like putting like video or do or like action song like that. And it been teaching me about a probably way. Not only like writing about a like song, but how you want to write him that lot song do. To my gym like God, that in the way Meladum. And every thing when we wanna make him, him gotta come out from that Holy Spirit, you know, like we had. And him show me what I we we just play doom that story or that song play him. Some people have doom like Black Pearl way that song got all about Crawberry. Some people him just like he got a guitar, you know, we sing. And some people have get him but song from English, put him the language. But all that lot there is probably hard and work. But I have all of funny that strength from God and give it to me. Through him, Holy Spirit, where I'm shown by me, make him that lot song by him. Plus share him with all the people more, plus serve who God is. And like beginning in more plus sabi who that Lord is. And like young people do, they are like sabi that God is really like all about. And like this Lord's song when we sing, we praise him like God probably way. To my him that true ball one boss blow. Like 